Hello. <laughs> so um, the suggestion here is that this is all there is. It's always only all there is. This, what is. And what is, is empty fullness. It's not an emptiness that becomes a fullness. It's empty fullness, one thing, just empty fullness. It's a mystery. It can't be recognized or understood. It's an energy that's simply, utterly boundless and free. There's nothing that influences that energy. It's completely without any direction or meaning or purpose of any kind. It's simply energy. It's aliveness. All there is, is aliveness. And because that aliveness is utterly free and boundless, it can also be limited. That limited energy brings, brings a contracted sense. And when, the child, when a child is born, after about a year of, of, of feeling boundless and without any sense of identity, after about a year, suddenly that contracted energy arises in the body and there's a feeling of, of identity suddenly. There's a feeling of contraction. And self-awareness arises. Self-consciousness arises. And when it arises, then what takes form is what I call the I am dream. I am a person. I am real. The I am dream arises. And the child grows up and seems to meet a lot of other I ams. So the whole sense of individuality becomes normal. I am, an, I am an individual. I live in a world full of individuals. And I am real. Those individuals are real. And my story is real. So I'm, I was born, I will live, and I will die. It's real. All of that is real, that story. And therefore, if it's a story about me, it must have some sort of purpose or meaning. So the child grows up into an adult in that world. And it learns how to deal with the world that it lives in. It, play, it learns how to play games in the world so that it will be liked. It learns how to try and manipulate the story. And it also comes to believe that it has free will and choice to make its story better or worse. <laughs> and, and so it, it lives in that world and comes that becomes a normal world. But for some reason or other, for a lot of people, it becomes quite unsatisfying. There's a feeling of dissatisfaction about living in that dualistic world, about living in a world where I am the center and everything else is happening to me. So there's this feeling that that isn't satisfying or fulfilling for quite a lot of people. In fact, most people who live in that world are always trying to satisfy a sense of lack. Even those who don't acknowledge that feeling have a subtle sense of lack, which they're always trying to fill with whatever they can find to fill it with. Well, for some people, they feel they want to go more deeply and find some sort of fulfilment to drop that sense of being separate. And so they, uh, as they've been brought up to believe that they have to do everything that is, is happening, they have to learn how to make their lives better, so they also come to feel that they have to find something called fulfilment. But because they live in a dualistic world and they experience themselves as separate, then they objectify that sense of fulfillment. They think they make it another something that they have to have. I have to have fulfillment, inner fulfillment. And it becomes an object which they then believe they have to work towards attaining. So there are many, many movements, many teachings, many religions out there that promise them a path leading to fulfillment. And they follow that path. But of course it's still a dualistic path. It's still a subject-object path. So it's whatever they do, however hard they try to find that fulfillment, they can never find it because they're looking for the infinite in the finite. 
They're looking for something that is beyond knowing in what they can know. They've learnt to know their world and they've learnt to know uh, what they can do or believe what they can do and, and can't do. They believe all of those things are something that comes out of their own effort. And they also come to believe that fulfilment is something that they can know or experience for themselves. So the individual is always looking for a better experience. And when it looks for fulfilment, that's all it's doing. It's looking for another experience that will fulfill it. So what we're doing here is talking about the possibility, first of all, that the whole sense of individuality, the whole sense of uh, this whole I am dream is an illusion. It's, it comes out of an illusory perception and an illusory experience. And the other thing that make, will come up here is that the whole idea of seeking the answer to fulfillment or seeking fulfillment or seeking some sort of path which will take one to a better experience is also wonderfully, absolute, absolutely, completely futile. That's what can come up here when we talk together about the human condition, where it is, what it feels, it, where it feels it can go, and, and, and the other possibility that arises, which is a totally radical possibility, that we can also talk about together. But this is really about an energy that takes form at a very early age. It's about a contracted energy. So essentially, the words can. Um, in some way or other, unravel the whole belief system that people build up about the nature of themselves and the nature of the world they live in. But that's really more a conceptual undoing that can happen. So there can be an undoing of certain belief systems that arise and the opening to the possibility of something absolutely radical. At that level of speaking, that can happen. But more than anything else, what goes on here is utterly beyond words. It's something that's energetic. And it's not anybody's energy, it's just energetic. It is the boundless energy I talked about at the beginning. That is constantly all there is. And somewhere that contracted sense of the self in here, that contracted energy, can um, melt and open into the whole. Okay. Um, you said something about the words that can actually happen. That there's, there's one moment when what you just said before, that there are some words that can happen about, words. about the idea that are deconstructing some ideas that I have maybe about myself. Yeah. Can And you exchange explain? your concepts? Yeah. yeah. Do you mean this is what is happening here or this is what some people offer, or can you explain this a little bit well, better? Well, there isn't a here, it's just okay. all, there is, all there is is what happens, and what seems to happen in this sort of setup where there's a meeting together is a conversation about the nature of, of, of the human being or what is believed about the nature of the human being and its situation in the world and the whole idea um, that can arise about seeking some sort of fulfilment, that can happen, apparently. Of course, everything is only apparent. There isn't anything that's real. The, the individual goes up in the illusion that it's real and that everything around it is real, the world is real. It even also comes to believe that fulfilment is another real thing that it can really have for itself. So what we're doing here is exposing or illuminating the whole illusion of that idea This can happen here, but everything that happens is, of course, is only an appearance. It's not real. So it's happening in the dream? It's apparently happening. Okay. You'll hear the word apparently a great deal here, because everything is seen here as apparent. There's nothing that's real. This is apparent. It's, appear it's emptiness appearing to be this. It's emptiness taking this form. And is there, is there any way that... I mean, there are a lot of people talking about things like this. Oh, well, let's not, I know, I'm, I'm not interested not, at all in anybody else that's talking about this. We're here, let's talk about it. Okay. <laughs> there are all sorts of ideas out there. I've, I've come across them. Okay, yeah. <laughs> Yeah.
as I said, there are many teachings promising a path to a, to a result. This is not, there's nothing for sale here. There's no agenda. There's nothing on offer. This is the worst place for a seeker to be because there's nothing available at all. There might be the idea that I get some deconstruction. Deconstruction? No, you won't get any deconstruction. <laughs> you won't get anything, but you might be deconstructed. <laughs> <laughs> but only apparently, of course. There isn't anything to deconstruct because there isn't anyone. There's nobody here. There's just bodies. So, uh, your last sentence was, there is nobody here, there are only bodies. And I was wondering, I, sometimes I have listened to you saying that there is, for example, when somebody is drinking a cup of coffee, there is only the drinking of the cup of coffee, but there is nobody there drinking. And then I was wondering how can it relate with there is nobody here, there are only bodies. That's the same thing. I mean, the, the, but then there the, is the a, body, a body has drinking. a brain and the brain is intelligent enough to drink a cup of coffee. Yes, Usually. yes. Now, but that's now all I am, there is. Now there I am happy with the answer because I was always thinking, okay, there is only this walking but nobody walking. Oh, yeah. there is drinking, nobody drinking. Absolutely, mm -hmm. man. You've got it. <laughs> no, no, oh, I oh. don't like it, no. You don't like that? Oh. No. <laughs> What would you like? No. <laughs> So, apparently, there is a body drinking the cup of coffee, yes? Or there is nobody drinking the cup of coffee, well, there is only drinking. Yeah, yeah. There is what is happening. You could give it all sorts of descriptions, but all there is is what's happening. But then is nobody doing it? Just a body mm. with something that belongs to everybody? Inside? No, it doesn't belong no. to anybody. All there is is bodies. There isn't anybody who owns bodies. Except in the dream of me. In the dream of me, this is my body, and this is me drinking coffee. This is my experience. So what we're pointing out here, or what's being illuminated here, is the possibility that that's an illusion. That all there is is apparently drinking coffee. There isn't anybody doing it. That's all. It's very simple. All there is is what is. So what's the problem? <laughs> our bodies. The, the thing our, of the our, body. Our body is, is a problem. <laughs> There's only is body. There isn't problem. anybody that owns the body. There's just a body. The dream is that I am real and I live in this body and this body is my body. That's the dream. That's what's being exposed here and talked about. <laughs> Hello, hi Tony. Hiya. Um, so, what you're saying and what you're suggesting is that there is no need for any, let's say, any worrying, any striving, any achieving, any resisting. Um, because it's all just what's always uh, happening mm. and there's just the experiencing of it well there is in the dream in, in the <coughs> dream there is the experience I yeah. experience sitting on a seat that's the dream I am sitting on a seat and I if, if I wouldn't dream how would it be now? it would just be sitting on a seat there wouldn't be anybody sitting on it Okay, I would just experience sitting just on the seat sitting and on talking seat would in be a what, microphone. What is apparently happening? Because in all of that, there is no need. It's just when, what's the, when the me now. is no more, there's no need. Everything is already fulfilled. All the time, there's a me, okay. there's a need. Me is need. Yeah. I need. Okay, I need the future, the next moment. There is no future or past. There just is what is. It, and there's no me. <laughs> well, there is an apparent me. The, 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 the me lives in the dream of being a real person. Get what on. we're doing here is exposing the possibility that that's a delusion. 
And all there is, is what is. Always. <laughs> and even what is, is only in appearance, out of nothing. Mm -hmm. Everything is, is simply in appearance mm -hmm. of nothing, so, um, which is a mystery. I guess I would like to... Um, how can I put it? I know what you will say. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I don't. You don't okay. know what I'm going to say. Um, to still, I mean, still... Um, <laughs> uh, the apparent I, I'm, I'm, I, I, I'm living, I, I live, or I think I live in this body. I mean, this yeah. body moves on. I, I'm, I'm sure that this body will get up from this seat eventually and move on. And I think what I would like to know is the, the practicality of how to... Um, I'm, I'm perfectly fine with not worrying, <laughs> not resisting. I think that's great to just Sounds be... Sounds as you are a bit worried about what's going to happen now. <laughs> so. Yeah, maybe. But to just... Okay, that's all that there is, and that's all there is. There's nothing needed. It's just... No. What you're suggesting is it's all fine. Well, no, I didn't say it's all fine. Oh, no. <laughs> it's not all fine. It could be absolutely awful. Okay. But, there isn't anything in the whole that has any need. In the dream of me, when there's a sense of separation, then there's a need, need to yeah. plan ahead or whatever you like. Yeah. Sit correctly, yeah. do whatever. Yeah. There's always a need to fulfill something. A need. The, the yeah. me lives in a sort of circular, yeah. in a wheel. Yeah. It's always waiting for the next moment. It's always... Yeah trying to experience the next moment and anticipate a better experience yeah. or a worse one. Okay. So it's always on the, on the move looking. It's, always, it's a seeker. The me is the seeker. Mm -hmm. Me is the separation that creates the seeking. Mm -hmm. When that suddenly collapses, there's nothing left mm -hmm. and everything and there's no need. Mm -hmm. It's indescribable. Mm -hmm. Nobody can describe what is. Mm -hmm. And until it collapses... What? The, the the separate okay. dream. Yeah. Um, are there any suggestions? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, no. Until the whole thing collapses, that just happens, and there's nothing. <laughs> there is either separation, or you know, the dream of separation collapses, and mm -hmm. then it can't, nothing can be described. Mm -hmm. There's just unknowing. Mm -hmm. Which, of course, the me doesn't like the idea of. Mm -hmm. So it's always looking for something that it can know, mm -hmm. even something called enlightenment that it can know. Mm -hmm. That's the fallacy, that's the dream. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, with this idea of what you just said, um, the body is sitting on the seat. Only apparently, yes. Yeah. I think um, from what I got in these three conversations here, it, it, there is not even the seat. So I mean, there is, is there already... There is an apparent seat, yeah. Yeah, if I, if I give the body the name the body, then I give the seat the name yeah, that's the fine. seat. Yeah. Or the coffee into yeah. the body. Yeah. But finding these words is actually the same like saying I am. It can be. All the time there's a dream of I am, then the, then the I, the me, the separate me, uses language and sees it as a confirmation of dualism. Yes. So the me uh, sees the seat as a separate object, a subject. It's a subject-object existence. Yes. Yeah. Everything it sees is separate to it, the, the seat the tree, my feelings, or these feelings, are still something that are happening. It's happening to me in the centre of all this. Well, but so it's we're, just we're exposing happening. that as a complete illusion. Yeah. This is a complete illusion. There isn't anything that anything's happening to. All there is, is what is. Exactly. Feelings, so the sentence, drinking coffee, is yeah, already absolutely. too much in the sense of then it's happening to someone yeah. or somebody because the coffee itself is happening yeah. and not just... Well, it's only apparently happening, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it is relationship or relation to relation and not actually 
like the body is to the chair in a certain relation. No, not at all. No, only if I give it the name. No, not at all. No, all the time there's a me. There's a relationship with the tree, with the seat, or another person, or the tree. When that illusion collapses, there is no relationship. There's nothing to relate to something else. There isn't a this and a that anymore. It's the end of dualism. There's not this, that, above or below, any of that stuff that comes up in the dreams of me. It's completely inconceivable. Me can't possibly conceive of this. It can't know it. It's unknowable. And it's this already. It's not somewhere else when you've meditated for 16 hours or whatever. It's this already. You are completely enveloped in what you long for. Completely enveloped already in what you long for. What you long for is constantly singing a song to you. You can't hear it because you're trying to find it. It's this already. In trying to find it, you're making it something. I must find this. It already is this. It doesn't need any finding. And how about processes of creation? There's no process and there's no creation. (coughs) This is not a creation. This is empty fullness. It's not real. It appears as this. And there isn't anything creating it. It just is and is not. This is and is not. Wow. (laughs) It's about something that's completely... Simple and ordinary and utterly, amazingly obvious. When this happens to people, they say to me, it's incredible. Why is anybody looking for this? It's obvious. So what is then the purpose of the dream? So why does it come in a year of one age or so, in the age of one year? There's no reason. It just apparently happens. It apparently happens. And directly, it apparently happens. Then, as the child grows, it's always looking for a purpose. I am a, per- a person. I will live 70 years or something, and I can, I can, if I can find, um, there must be a purpose to all of this. So if I can find the purpose, then I can learn how to live properly and have a purposeful experience. That's the dream. There's no reason why it happens. It, seem, it apparently happens. The only thing that's amazing about all of this is that when that dream drops away, it's obvious that it was never happening. So there's no such thing as liberation or enlightenment. There's just the dropping away of an illusion. This is about loss. This isn't your... This is not about something you're going to gain. This is about loss. Uh, hello. So, are you saying that there's th- that the I thought is a kind of dream within a dream? It's just a dream. You don't have to complicate it, really. <laughs> it is, you know, the, when the child becomes uh, or gets a sense of individuality, it grows up. In the dream, the hypnotic, very powerful dream that I am a real person. Most people in, you know, are, are in that dream. I am a real person. I have a life, and I can make it work. Mm. But I mean, a dream within a dream, in the sense that um, even even without the eye, there is is like a substratum of apparent bodies and objects and so on and the processes in every, the every, when, the, when the me dies when the me collapses it's obvious that everything is apparent but it's not obvious to anyone <laughs> there is just it can't be put into words but it, the nearest you can get to it is, it's absolutely obvious that everything is nothing there is only nothing appearing to be something so, so you could call it a dream if you mm-hmm. like Mm. Is it in some way analogous to waking up from a, a sleeping dream, a night dream? Um, I suppose you could say that, yes, it's a possibility. But the only problem for the me is that when it wakes up from sleeping, it thinks it's stopped dreaming, but it's entered the main dream, which is the I am dream. 
when that whole thing collapses, there's a recognition by no one that there never was a dreamer. Mm -hmm. Oh, right at the back. Uh, you said um, it's about loss. But at the same time, there is something here which I can't, can't lose. Oh, right. What's that? Yeah, me. Oh, right. Mm. No, you and the me can't lose me because me will try very hard to lose me, but all it will be left with is me, trying to get rid of me. So... Obviously, that's obvious. That's why the whole sense of seeking and the idea that you can move into some other experience is completely futile. Because it's you trying to escape from yourself. Me is dualism. It doesn't enter a funny grey cloud called dualism. Me is dualism. So it's constantly trying to escape from itself, which you can't do, of course. Yes, of course. Uh, that's the experience that uh, I can't escape me. Sorry? That, that's the experience of everyday life that I can't ex escape me. No. Um, okay. So, um, <laughs> so, um, so what? Um, this me, uh, which we call me, is, is you sometimes say it's an imaginary center. It, well, it's a dreamt center, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, um, so actually, there uh, uh, doesn't exist a me, or also not a higher me, or, or you know this. No, there's no higher or lower here. That's in the dream, and there isn't something that doesn't exist in that. The me, you can't say the me doesn't exist because, as far as the me is concerned, it's very real. Yeah. So the experience for me is I am real. So. All, that, all that's being suggested, well, what's being suggested here is that the, uh, is the sense of a me is in appearance. It's an appearance. It's nothing appearing to be a sense of me. Okay. Appearing to be something. Yeah, yeah. It's like everything else. Like everything else appearing, there is, uh, yeah, appearing or uh, being a but me. But for the me, of course, what appears is real. The wall is real. Everything is, seems to be real. That's the illusion. <laughs> mm. It's very simple. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, okay, okay, good. Uh, the next question. <laughs> the next question. Um, you, uh, I feel that um, sometimes you feel very excited or happy. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> And uh, um, there is um, something different there. Than here. Well, I'm better looking than you are. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, all the time there's a me, it will feel a difference. When there is no me, there is no difference. All there is is what is. All there is is what is. Mm. You know, the me lives in comparison. How do I compare with him or her? Am I different? Because that comes out of the idea that you are. You know, the, the me is real. I am real. So how is my real me different to her real me or his real, real me? Mm. All that collapses, of course. I think. Thank you. Yeah, I, what comes out of that question, I get the sense what comes out of that question is maybe you should be as excited as I am. Yes, yes. Yeah. Forget it. Okay. I'm not excited, but there is excitement. <laughs> Just, you know, you're sort of trying to see a quality in someone else that you think you should... Yes, yes. Yeah. So, hmm. Tony, another hmm. question. Um, you said um, you can't hear the singing of, of everything because you're me. So, no, say that again. I, think. Um, I don't know correct, but uh, I think you said uh, you can't hear the singing of, of this. The singing of it? Oh, okay. Then, okay, I will... Uh, uh, another. Uh. Oh, I see, okay, all right, I'm with you. The me can't... Uh, I, what I said was the beloved or wholeness or empty fullness is singing constantly. Yeah, yeah. But the me can't hear that singing because it's looking for it. 
So it's, a, it's trying to find it somewhere. It's already here. This is it. But the me turns what it's looking for into a something. I must find this something. There isn't anything. It already is this. It's already this. Okay. Good. Um, and <laughs> um, in former times, uh, so um, the in Indian spiritual teachers or oh God. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, the word Om or uh, Om, you know, the word Om. 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 Well, they're all for all sorts of things. Yeah. <laughs> That yeah. was about doing a process or a practice which would bring something. What we're saying here is that that's completely new. So it was bullshit what the... Uh, uh, bullshit's one good word, yes, bullshit. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> Delusion. Delusion. Uh, the, first of all, that there is someone who can choose to involve themselves in the process. That's already fallen apart. There isn't anyone. There's no choice. And the idea that somewhere uh, a process will bring this person from one place to another. That's the second delusion of all teaching. There isn't another place... There's nowhere else. This is already all there is. Where would, where would you go? Do you want to go outside the door and find more isness out there? Or to a church or to an ashram? This is all there is. Why go anywhere? <laughs> I think that's not on. Um, I just wanted to ask, how about creating new life? Because you cannot do that, let's say, without a me and without, without another me. Um, oh, you so, believe that? Yeah. Well, I. No, I mean, I if you know. feel. How, how, do, how do we create? Okay, and then I'm creating also another life that does not have an I until it's maybe a year old. Fine. But you're not creating. The creation Look. of a child, let's be simple about that, is what happens. Nobody does it. There isn't anyone. The whole idea that you create another child with somebody else is a dream. You, I, will choose to create a child. There's nobody that creates anything. All there is is what happens. An apparent child is born, but that's not because of any choice or action taken by apparently me. Me lives in an amazingly arrogant dream and it believes that it brings about all sorts of things. Actually, it doesn't do anything at all. It's a dream that I am a real and I can take action to bring about things. It's simply a dream. There isn't anything that does it. Energy, all there is is energy and out of contracted energy can come all sorts of amazing things but no, no me does that. There's no such thing as Chopin's 21st Piano Concerto because there is no Chopin. But the 21st Concerto which is attributed to an apparent Chopin is energy in that form. There isn't a me that does anything because it's an imagined dream. So, Tony, you were talking about energy. So, so, this is something, or it appears to me that you believe in this energy. So Not if, at all. If, I don't, there's no one here that believes in anything. Yeah. It's just a description, a live right. energy. Yeah. So, you could also take another name. So, instead of energy, you could say information, thoughts. Mm, or, so. uh, that's yeah. not information, it's energy. It's... it's Yeah. Energy is all there is, aliveness. We, information is an intellectual communication about some facts. Yeah, yeah but, all, yeah. but energy s seems to me to be then a link to a physical world. Okay, that's what's happening this, there. This, yeah. It brings me to earth down from this, this idea, yeah? So a kind of bridge to the physical world this, when, you, when, we, when you use the word If energy. If you feel that, that's what's happening there, yeah. 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 So, in Or my what about is this being, is this beingness? Yeah. There are no words that can describe yeah, this everything and nothing. Yeah. How would you describe everything and nothing? So now it's not oh. possible to describe. But my my in my 
in my perception, mm. it mm. is more about thoughts. So this would be what, what my, my me or what appears to me to be a kind of basic process or whatever. So uh, 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 plays a basic role. This is, would be thoughts. So thoughts is the one I perceive which accompan accompanies me all the time. Okay. So there's the thought radio always running. And when the radio is off, the world is gone. So this is my perception. Right. And therefore I would say thoughts is something generating the world. Okay. The appearance of the world. Yeah. So you do not uh, In disagree. In a way, I go along with that, but what, the source for me is nothing. Nothing yeah. is the source of everything. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. That's fine. Okay. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. So there is another thought now about all these thoughts we are exchanging. Um, I'm a dancer, so I was busy with my body, this instrument, quite a lot for several years. And I do think that there is certain moments where... Um, at least there's this try to let go of the mind-mind where this me or the idea of this I, the need to identify with something outside, maybe another body or another thing happening um, where this can let go or where you got close to letting go of it or where like this daring to trust that there's something inside this body, an energy, something I cannot grasp right, through right. my mind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there is this wisdom. I mean, I use now words, but it That's is right. not describable with my words because they only appear through my mind, but what is happening in my body has no words. It's just right. happening. No, absolutely. And I think through my physical experience I got close to this okay I can dare to trust but this is still made with my brain mm, that's funny. and I think it's way more difficult for me to adapt this to this outer world because this seems so I can grasp it somehow yeah I can drink the coffee which what is then happening with the coffee is maybe beyond or like in Chinese medicine, I get the feeling that they really try to trust into the wisdom and the knowledge, this pure energy, maybe information or whatever kind of word we want to use for yeah. it. But we are only using words because this is our way to describe yeah. it yeah. instead of just letting it happen. Yeah, it's indescribable. It is yeah. not describable, yes. yeah, Absolutely. But yeah. I do think that the experience of it... Um, or where I had the feeling I can get close to it no. is through the body. Well, I'm right, yeah, okay. And not with the thinking, but if I no. can somehow let my body experience something and... Yeah, yeah. And Absolutely. I think that's maybe a lack in our culture where we in Western cultures are somehow disconnected from our bodies. We think like, this is me and yeah. this is the body I possess. And that's why I think that maybe Asian philosophy, where people are maybe in certain cultural groups are different connected to their bodies, that they, they, they have a different, they use maybe similar vocab, but they actually, they have a different experience yeah. of what is this wisdom I cannot describe with my body, this consciousness, which somehow chooses that I can make thoughts about it, but... I don't know about this consciousness. Why is it choosing us and why is it giving oh, it, us... Well, it doesn't choose us and it's not consciousness. It's well, just aliveness. It is aliveness, but it has a certain... There's things happening in, an, in its own logic happening or like it is... If it's sequences or like it is happening, but it has... It is alive, so it's not it's dead. It's apparently happening without anyone. You know, yeah. As far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah, yeah man. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Yeah, thank you. 
Um, okay, I want to start at the same point because that's very interesting for me what she said. She started with this experiencing the body right now. It is experienced somehow. Well, she was using that language. She was pointing to something that's beyond experience as far as I'm concerned. I heard us pointing to something that's beyond personal yeah. experience. That you can't put a word to, really. I mean, we can't, nobody can name Yeah, I have the same problem a little bit, so it's very hard for me to say something. But I also have a story of um, maybe physical training or whatever. And right now, there's a body experience or felt, or I don't know how to say it, and there are, there's an area where are no words. Yeah. I cannot, I can do whatever I want. Absolutely. I'm, I'm, I, I screw it up every time. And the strange thing is, At the same, I can I don't understand that at all, because I have all these dream things, illusion problems. If you explain them, I say, okay, I noticed this. I, I, I have no idea about liberation, and or, I don't this understand. This isn't all about the liberation. Oh, I, I also cannot say, you, you know. But there's one part where it's direct experience, and it's so clear, and it's so easy. Mm. <sighs> I mean, you know, there, there, there can be glimpses of this or a sense of this, of course. Why not? But, yeah, but I, I, this feels like all the time constant and available and there's no effort and it's nothing added. It's like a loss. Maybe before I could not, if there was before, but it was maybe not noticed. But I'm still very, I mean, nothing is solved in my head. There's, there's, I cannot say it. No. I, let's, I say it in stupid no, words. Yeah? There's, there's no enlightenment and nothing in myself. I'm as confused as I always was. Yeah. Let's say it like but this. Also there's, But there's, there's direct a experience. Yeah. And I, can, I don't understand it because it's... I don't... So I would... You said something. There was a time when Tony Parsons disappeared. I don't know if I said but it right. Only and then he came back. But only apparently, right? yeah. And... But it was never at the same time that you had the feeling there's direct experience or there's something direct and still something very pff, somewhere else. Is this yeah, happening well, at the same time? Yeah, absolutely. Why not? What's wrong with that? What, what do you, would you like something clearer or more definite? This is like that. This is, you know... Ch -ch -ch -ch. There's a very stra strong sense also experienced now that I did not get it. Now, even though I see that this is a very easy you, thing, you never, and it's, you never it's will, for nothing and it's you meaningless. You never will get it. That's but, the whole point. But there's still me thinking mm, that's still happening at the same time. Right. Even though I feel, this is what I feel in the body, that it's for nothing. It's for no reason and it's for no help and it's not making me any better. Absolutely. And all the things... Yeah, But man. there's still me saying... So you're oh. me, it's me and being, me and being. But it's a, Join but, the queue. But this one part is very constantly consisting in saying there's something missing. Right. Even though at the same time this is available. And I don't get this. No, neither do I. <laughs> Nobody gets it. I, I, I try. I try again a little bit, because when at a certain point, let, the, the, something direct is experienced. So I said it again. At a certain point, um, there's direct experience, or something is appearing, like the body or something, and it's appearing to somebody. No. No, I'm not, not a good you know, direction. Although, all experience um, is only a personal thing. Yeah. But maybe you're, I think you're talking about something else. Maybe. You're, my sense of what you're trying to talk about is that there is, it seems at times there's a dancing in and out of beingness into meanness, meanness into beingness. And that's what can happen for a lot of people before the final collapse or the apparent collapse of me. Yeah, I think I don't no. mean this. Oh, right. I. Or at least I don't, I, I would never come to the words, I would never say something like I'm going from beingness to meanness. Okay. I just notice directly. Well, I didn't say you do, but go on. You tell me, you describe it in your way. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can just say that there, that when when there is direct experience of the body, I cannot even talk about it. It's I have the same. I would I would find in that moment I would find the same words. I would say, the moment I start talking, the moment that I make some story out of it, I cannot use any word. It's no. there's no possible way to. Ah, not possible. Okay. But no. the, there's not this thing what you described that there's. And I don't know anything about there was a me and then there was no me okay. and then it came back. Fine. So I never. It, it's more like whenever there's. I mean, I'm always here. Uh, yeah, I'm not here. Well, but so I, hold on. I, I when you say myself. I'm always here, is that me or yeah. you? Or, oh, okay, that's fine. That's yeah. not not something bigger. It's just no. this small me is always here. Okay. Um, and I don't understand how I can that there's a part where where this direct experience is happening, and I, I it's like a taste of what you talk sometimes about, but at the same time it can never be the same. Because I, I, yeah, I cannot explain. It's very complicated. Okay. Or maybe it's. I wonder if this direct experience of, let's say, body that I cannot describe. I don't know what you. I don't know what you mean by direct experience of the body. That's got it, nothing to do with what I'm talking about. That's okay. something that happens in the dream. I have a direct experience of this body. This is what's happening. It's real. Yeah. I, that's not what I'm talking about. I know that's. There's not. nothing that knows there is everything. There just is everything. There's nothing that has an experience of everything. There just is everything and nothing. Boom. And it's either. The, so it's either there's nothing, having the experience. No, not at all. No, I think you're. I don't quite know how you're using words, but there is no experience of nothing and everything. There is only nothing and everything. All the time there's an experiencer, and the experiencer feels that they are a, a person in something called existence. Yeah, Mike. So, um, if it can't be understood, I can't do anything that this melting away happens. No. So, I could do everything and go uh, fuck around. Or, yeah, fucking um, around is a good idea. Yeah, or I could go, or, or I could go to... Um, Doing meditation or yeah. going to ashrams or <coughs> doing whatever, if I don't... Just stop there, hold on, because you're presuming you can choose to do those things. What's being pointed out here is there isn't anyone there that can choose to raid a bank or go to an ashram or meditate. It's what happens. All there is is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> There's nobody in this room choosing to do what's happening. All there is, is what's happening. It's amazing. It's, it's absolutely astounding. Moving around, thinking, feeling. It's just, it's the beloved. Wow. Um... Here it seems that in the end it uh, it's not relevant if if there's a me or it's not a me. Not at all. Because Except anyhow, to me. it's relevant to me, but it's not. It's completely irrelevant. It's irrelevant if there is one or it's not. But the seeking ends. It's the seeking that stops. Well, me is seeking, so it's always relevant to be a me, because it's always climbing a mountain. Okay. Yeah. A very high, sharp, horrible mountain. That is endless. So what's wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> well, ask the guy climbing the mountain what's wrong with it. The guy climbing the mountain thinks it's bloody awful. So it is relevant. There are guys who like this mountain. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah. But it doesn't matter. Nothing does because everything is already complete. It's irrelevant. Nothing matters. 
But tell me that. Tell me that. But in the end, it's like this me feeling, or how do you describe it? It's like pepper in the soup. Nobody wants to disappear, I think. Or What in the soup? It's, it's like pepper in the soup. Sometimes it's, it's nice to be... Um, Frustrated, not nice. It's frustration. Oh, okay. It's oh, frustration. Well, enjoy the trip. Then. It's uh, like <laughs> contrast. It's like going into a horror movie, maybe, or yeah. You enjoy it also. I enjoy it also. So, what's Good, wrong with it? Um, that's nice to hear. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but the seeking ends. The seeking ends. For me, it, here, the seeking stops, or the seeking, how do you describe it? It's uh, crumbling. The seeking is crumbling. All right, okay. Mm. Yeah. Like your socks. Yeah, <laughs> I said I like your pink socks. They are nice. <laughs> You'd like me to stop? No. <laughs> I said, oh, oh yeah. Your socks there. <laughs> you can only wear these socks if you are enlightened. I might pass them on. They cost a lot of money, though. <laughs> Especially if I haven't washed them. <laughs> when, when you say that this is all there is, um, in the context of where we are now, are, are, you, su are you suggesting that there is nothing else existing beyond that, that, that uh, our knowledge that, that there's a... No, this is not a knowledge that all there is, is and is not. And all there is, is empty fullness. It's in incomprehensible. It doesn't, it doesn't involve any context or any measurement at all. It's immeasurable. This is it. Wherever you go, you can go out and get in the lift or go down the road to the restaurant. It's all there is. And is not. You can never escape from the beloved. The beloved is all there is. And is not. So, uh, so any mere knowing, for example, that you know, we're in Munich at the moment, or oh, no, that's, no. that's effectively... That's knowledge. This is... This is beyond knowing. All there is, what is, is beyond knowing. So if, if I were in a room rather like this one and there was a, a different teacher... No, saying, I'm not a teacher. Oh, well, a different anyway, speaker. Anyway, a different guy. A, a different guy, right. Saying that, that, that you have to go through all sorts of spiritual disciplines in order to achieve enlightenment at some time in the future and so on. That would also be all there is. Absolutely. For me in, in that situation. This is situation. no thing arising as an apparent teacher teaching a method to find everything. Absolutely. So, so, so in effect, we would be creating that reality. No, you're not creating anything. There is no creator. There is no creator at all, anywhere. Or, nothing uh, is created because nothing is happening. That's... that's That's pretty dramatic. There's nothing happening, so there's no creation. But a te an apparent teacher teaching meditation, let's keep it simple, is simply another thing that appears to be happening. There's nothing right or wrong with it. It is what seems to be happening. Yes, so... It's the beloved in that form. Mm hmm <laughs> so 
how, can, can you say then that, that the meditation teacher and, and, and you are in any way that there is any that there's anything more truthful if you like about there is no truth yeah. and the meditation teacher still lives in the self in the dream I am dream because, it, because the whole motivation to teach or help somebody find something comes out and is in the dream the, the difference between that and this is that this is not a dream there's no dream. There's nothing inviting somebody to make an effort to find a better experience called meditation. That's the difference. There, there is someone who's trying to help somebody find something, so it's a sort of constructive form of teaching. Here, it's pure destruction. <laughs> pure destruction. But to the extent that I, I'm not somehow, or that this apparent I isn't fully able to accept that, then I'm, st I'm in a dream while... Yeah, and the me will never accept it. It isn't a question of one day accept. The me can never accept its own destruction. The me is intent on surviving. So it sits here and, here and, and sort of hears the words of this, but, but in, in, in essence has to reject it because it's about its own survival. This is pointing to its own destruction. Can't hear it. It's hoping something nice might happen later on. <laughs> like being struck by lightning or suddenly... You know. But that's why it lives in that dream. It lives, I am the dream. I am real. You can't tell me I'm not real. And you can't tell me that I, I, I won't go on seeking. Because that's, that's what makes me feel real. But the interesting thing is that something else happens, apparently. Not to do with beliefs or the sense of me. So, so it's a kind of... Um, it, it simply goes past the, the me in a sense. Oh, totally. I mean, it's just totally... What's happening here is immeasurably beyond any idea that the me has about itself or where it could go or not go. That's a dream. It's just a little... There's something else going on. I could meditate, I could go, I could be a good person, I could be a Christian, I could be a dev, I could be a Buddhist, I could be a... <laughs> One. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I can I can feel the this eye getting extremely un uncomfortable, <laughs> and um, but uh, and then I, th there's the idea that if I don't pay attention to it or give it too much attention, um, it'll, you know. That would be the best thing to do. Okay, but who is the eye that's not going to give the eye any attention? I was just going to ask you that. It's another eye. <laughs> you have, yeah. Yeah, yeah. The, the me, when it grows, as it grows up, learns um, that there's a higher self and a lower self. That basically, I mean, in simple terms. And uh, the, it learns that the higher self aspires to great things including making a lot of money or whatever you like, or becoming enlightened or becoming a great Christian or becoming good or whatever you like. It aspires to the higher ideals that it learns in the story, absolutely in the story. But it also has a lower self which longs to lie in bed, smoke cigarettes and do, <laughs> and do naughty things to the opposite sex or to both of the same sex. It really doesn't matter. It longs to lie around and just wallow in pleasure. <laughs> uh, and those two have a battle, a constant battle with each other in the dream of me. That's what we're talking about here. That's, in that sense, those two want to experience things in them. They want to, you know, the higher self wants a high, high experience, the lower self wants a, a lower experience. And it goes on and on, feeding itself only because it senses a lack of something else beyond both of those polarities. 
so so then um so the the any kind of strategy whatever whatsoever towards the the eye as far as you're concerned is is just another aspect of the eye totally yeah because it, because the only sort of aspect or process that seems attractive is pure dual, it's another form of dualism there are two there's me and there's a process that I can enjoy, you know, involve myself in. This is dualism. In order to find something else called, this is immortal. <laughs> of course, because it's based on, on the sense that there is me and there's something else. That's the absolute futility of all seeking. So then the, the I can only uh, um, appear to disappear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, through 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 accident, really. Sorry. Through some kind of accident. No, it's not an accident. No, it's simply that the whole energy of the sense of me in the in that dream simply is no more there. And when it's no more there, it's suddenly recognised it never was real anyway. So the energy kind of withdraws itself, or well, it was never in. The well, it doesn't withdraw itself because it's not real. Don't forget, there is no such thing as enlightenment or liberation. There's no such thing as seeking. There's no such thing as uh, uh, there's no, no such thing as real as a real something that has to seek another real something. It's all a dream. It's all an appearance. And so, those individuals who who have had or claimed to have had a, an, an enlightened experience, were, were they necessarily delu- deluding themselves? Or? Well, obviously they must be, because there is no one that becomes enlightened. That's a contradiction in terms. The idea that somebody claims that they have become enlightened as an individual is claiming something that's still in a dream. I have attained, I, the me, the I am real me, has attained something else real called enlightenment. Well, no, I'm, I'm not saying that but oh. they would say I have, I oh. am enlightenment, but, there but, are but some, yeah. some kind of, mm, some kind of sh- shift or some something. When, when this happens, it's mm. it's recognised that there was no shift and no one to shift, and there was nothing to obtain or experience. It, when I talk to a lot of people and. and you know, in, and you can always tell when somebody thinks something happens is when they claim that the, that something has happened to them, and they can describe it as something known. This is unknowable and indescribable. 